I mean, you could be like, I have it. Evil Knievel's jump at Caesar's Palace on here. Yeah, well, he would have he would have watched that with me. But speaking of that, I do have that right here. Yeah, let's not forget about Robbie here. Let's, or this is actually evil. This is Evil's. evil. Okay, yeah, let's go. Let's go to evil. Some of some of evil's famous falls. Yeah. Enough about this porno stuff. Yeah, enough porn. Let's get to evil. Let's get some motorcycles and crashes and shit. Oh, oh, oh. I, 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 oh, <laughs> oh. Ow. that doesn't even look like that gnarly of a jump. I think it's that he was trying to do it on a Harley or something, right? Yeah, I don't know. I just know that fucking hurts. You never rode motorcycles? <sighs> I've been on them, but no, I, I missed my chance to... Do it. I had a I had a Kawasaki, a little Kawasaki 550 that my parents bought me for my 16th birthday. Mm -hmm. And I rode the piss out of this thing. I mean, I really rode it a ton. And you know, when everybody else had their driver's license, I, I already had my motorcycle license. So I was riding motorcycles by like 16, 16 and a half, 17. You know, I was already riding my motorcycle. And dude. As hard as that, that, that accident there that we just saw doesn't look like much. Not really. Right. Let me tell you, that hurts so fucking bad. <laughs> I never did a biff like that, but I put, I laid my motorcycle down a couple of times and it hurts so bad. Dude, I have a friend named Don in Florida and he has a muffler burn across his chest. Mm -hmm. Like it's you could see the muffler in its entirety because the bike had like fallen on top of them. And it's just like, sure. <laughs> yeah, I dude. don't doubt it, dude. All right. Now you got me telling stories about this. Here we go. <laughs> so there was a, on um graduation night, my graduation night, I was hanging out with this girl, Chris Chudzinski. And um, I picked her up on my, on my motorcycle. And her parents really did not like me because I was the motorcycle kid, you know, so they You're didn't the like projector kid. Well, they didn't know that. <laughs> all they knew is that all they knew is that I was the motorcycle kid. And I ain't gonna lie. I was drunk off my ass. I was really hammered. And I put her, I, she got on the motorcycle. We started, we started driving. We were going to go to all the, all the, um, uh, graduation parties. We were going to bounce around at the different graduation parties. So we're going up a street and boom, lights. And I'm like, mother fuck. And I'm like, holy shit. So I'm like hauling ass and trying to get away from the cops. Right. Hauling ass. I'm hauling ass. I'm going like 75 miles an hour or something on a fucking 25 mile an hour street. And I start yelling back to her. I'm like, jump off, jump off. <laughs> And she wouldn't jump up, but I knew I was getting slowed down by the extra weight for her being on the bike. <laughs> and and I and she she ended up jumping off. And she she fucking wiped out like I slowed down enough and she jumped off and wiped out and just laid in a ditch and the cops didn't come and get her and I like kind of circled circle looped lost the cops and I came back to get her. I pick her up. She had a burn mark on her calf that it, it, it almost looked like a wraparound on her calf because what happened was when she was trying to get her leg off to jump off the motorcycle, mm -hmm. she fucking stuck her leg down on the exhaust thing and she was drunk or stoned or whatever we were at right. the time and she didn't really feel it. So she had this huge mark. Oh my God. I thought her dad, I ended up taking her home. I thought her dad was going to fucking murder me. Cause they had to treat that. It sounds like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. she definitely had to go to the hospital. I, I couldn't drop her off and, and go away. I had to literally carry or go, her in or go like, Oh, well now I have to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. It, it wouldn't have shocked me if you did. We, we both went with the stupid lie of, of she fell off the bike. That was right. the lie that we told was that she fell off. It's reasonable. I hit, a, I hit a rock. I lost a little control and she fell off the bike. That was what we went with but he knew he knew, or maybe he didn't know but he didn't like me anyway so you know oh my god i'd be so upset if i had a daughter that that was in some situation like that oh it was it was bad it was bad but then i went back to right back on the motorcycle went to the parties and went partying just dropped her off <laughs>
because <laughs> I was a dick back in those days. But <laughs> but you never got into riding like after that. When when did you put down the dirt bike? No. When you got a car, you got a cool car. And never looked um, back. Not really. I mean, I I kept the motorcycle for um years. I ended up it's a stupid way to end up losing my motorcycle. But what happened was in um 1994 in June. I can't even tell you the month. I rode my motorcycle down to Blossom Music Center to see um, Metallica and uh, Danzig. And nice. um, I, I'm at the show. I'm completely fucked up. I mean, completely annihilated drunk. And I've told part of this story on the CMS before, but this was the one where they were making blanket fires, again with the fire, and um, everybody was moshing around the fires. And I dove into one to see just to prove what a badass i was because i'm an idiot and a drunk the fire yeah was I, it during I, that song I, it probably was I, i'm sure that's what it was i you know what i don't remember but let's be honest that makes sense doesn't it but i dove in and i got second degree burns on my on my hand and my my arm so some buddies knew i couldn't ride home because i could you know my hand was all fucked up so they drove me home but I went to the to the venue on my way out, and I said, "My bike is parked in the park in the bike lot. I'm too drunk to ride it. Can you leave it till the morning?" <laughs> and they said yes. So the next day, you know, I I come back to pick up my motorcycle. It's towed, of course. You know, they just straight lied to me. So then I call the 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 company to get the motorcycle back. And they're like, oh, it's um twelve hundred dollars to get the motorcycle. You're because like, I not it for that much. Yeah, well, not only did they <laughs> tow it, but they had to use some special kind of equipment to tow it or some bolt because it wasn't a car. So, you know, so I was like, you know what? Fuck you, keep it. <laughs> you know? right. And I never went back and got it. I just was like, I'm not paying that. And I just let them, you know, they ended up selling it at auction or something. And I was just right. like, fuck it, I'm done not paying $1,200 for this thing. We were that, talking last week about the uh, luggage that gets yeah. resold mm -hmm. and, and actually even cars get left at the airport. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. You know, sometimes who, who knows, let's say you go to jail for a while or whatever and, or somebody dies or something, man, yeah. die. Well, a couple of years, the thing's sitting in there and you, you're having to pay all that money. I mean, once yeah. that exceeds the value of the car, what's the point? Yeah. And just buy another one. And that was, it, it's funny with that motorcycle. That was always my idea was, I remember telling my ex at the, t you know, I, I told her, I said, cause she was like, you got to go get it. You got, I was like, fuck that. I'm not going to get it. I'll just get another one. I was like, I'm going to save up for six months. I'm going to get another one, a bigger one. Cause this was just a little 550. I was like, I'm going to get a big one. I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a Harley. I'm going to get an 1100 something. You know, I'm going to get something big, right? Never saved up any money. Never again had a motorcycle. <laughs> you know, life just moved on and it didn't move on with me getting another bike. So, and where you live too, it's like, you really can't ride it except during the summer anyway. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's, it's a four month toy. That's really what it right. is. It, it's like guys that own boats around here. That to me is the dumbest purchase known to man. You spend a hundred grand on a fucking boat and you can take it out. What? 10 times a year. If that. Mm. You know, that just Susan sucks. sold her boat, my girl. We had a boat for a while here, but it's I mean, boats boats are a hobby and they're an expensive hobby. Oh man, the gas and or the, the diesel and all that stuff is so expensive. I'll give everybody an Eric tip when it comes to boating if you're considering getting one. Instead Don't of getting a boat, just have a friend that has a boat. <laughs> and be the guy that shows up with the booze. And the food, hey man, let's have a boat party. And then yeah. you, you just bring all the stuff and they'll be happy to have you because you're bringing stuff. That's right. That costs you not much compared to what that boat slip rent is and what the Hell yeah. maintenance on the boat is, having to, to, to uh, clean the underneath from the barnacles. Oh, yeah, and the barnacles growing. And shit, right. Yeah. Yeah. You're we, good. You, you can get on that boat twice a year for about 60 bucks worth of meat trays. <laughs> you know, you're good. <laughs> And it's the resales hard too. I mean, sadly, you know, she lost some money. I mean, it was a dream of hers to learn how to sail and she mm. got a pretty cool, almost pretty much a yacht. It was pretty much like a yacht. Wow. 
but she didn't know how to sail right you know and so the only time we took it out was when a friend that had a boat in the harbor would captain it and take it out okay. i mean at the most we, it has a little motor and we put put it around the harbor and things and we had we got some pictures of that but um event sadly her ex-husband had passed away like the alimony ended right abruptly sat unfortunately so that extra play money was gone all of a sudden and you've you know on average i'd say with the maintenance you know you're spending about 800 or more bucks a month to keep just have the it's just to have the boat yeah and when yeah. it's cold this time of year you don't want to really go out to it where the weather's bad yeah no i dude i get and over here it's it's way worse my parents had a boat and i mean they used to tell me horror stories about money not about the boat. They loved the boat when it was when it was live and they could go and they could water ski and do all that kind of stuff. You know, sure. and that all was fun. I ain't gonna lie, that that all was fun. It was fun to go water skiing on the boat and whatnot. But then you start thinking about, well, it's gonna cost six grand to store this sucker for the winter. And you know, and then you have to do some kind of maintenance to it so that it doesn't dry rot or some shit, you know, and it's like that's another thousand yep. dollars and the slip yeah. rent wasn't bad. In most cases, when somebody sells a boat here, or at least where I live in Oceanside at the harbor, usually the boat price includes that transfer of the slip. And the okay. slip rent is actually only like $400 a month. Well, that's not bad, but still. Now, you can, you can apply for a live aboard status. Okay. Which the waiting list is a couple of years. You know, what do you mean the waiting list? Why do you have to have a waiting list to live on something? Well, the, the harbor itself doesn't have that many slips. So you oh, got to okay. wait for somebody to croak or somebody to sell okay. their boat, uh, which both things happen, believe it or not. People die in that harbor. They fall in the water and fucking I die. Bet. Oh, yeah. You know, drinking and stuff. All those people down there are pretty gnarly and they just <laughs> they party and do blow <laughs> and you know, everything. Uh, but um, we have a, a few friends that, that do live on their boats. And, uh, you know, to me, that's a step away from being homeless. If you want uh, living on a boat. Yeah, it's, man. Yeah. It's just not big <laughs> enough. We argued about this, Susan and I, last night, because she was saying, I could totally live on a boat for months and months. And I'm like, you're fucking crazy. I'm like, because it was a cold day for us yesterday, and it was. It looks like a tsunami is going to come in. In yeah. fact, they have a sign posted about 100 yards from my house for the tsunami evacuation plan. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which really, what plan is there besides go that way? Yeah. Easy, fast as yeah. you can. Where's the um, land? Run into it. I live in a paradise normally, but it does get a little sketchy when you live right on, on the strand. Like I sure. do, you look out and the, the palm trees are like, and it, it looks very scary. Like a tsunami sure. is about to happen. Um, but I said to her, you know, days like this, you know, you know, how miserable it would be to live on a boat. It's the size of your kitchen. Yeah. You have, and it's up and have. down. It's bouncing in the water and shit. Like I, I'm sure he also pays for a storage place somewhere yeah. that he has more stuff but as far as what you could fit on the boat it ain't much and he has a dog oh, no. or one buddy so he's got a big dog and they're down there in this little area the size of a typical kitchen that is horrible yeah you that know, makes you that it. makes you want to live in a mobile home they do have showers like you'd have to walk and they have uh really nice you know showers and bathrooms that you can walk mm -hmm. up the dock and go over and you have a fob so like only the boat owners could get in there but to me that's no different than having a ymca yeah that's like going you know. to the gym and taking a shower <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which my I had a homeless buddy who did that too. He was living in he had decided to save on rent here and live in his car. He wasn't a drug addict or anything. He was a actually a Vietnam vet. Okay. And he was older and he was worried about, you know, his final years being able to pay for whatever. So he decided he was gonna spend a few years, you know, living in his car. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. And, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, in, with the homeless situation here, there are a lot of people in, in Southern California that are in bad people that they're just can't afford anything. So they're trying to save up and they're living in their cars and right. it's unfortunate. There are different, uh, you know, classes of homeless. Sure. You know, have, have you we, ever, have you ever been that broke that you had to live in a car? Um, the, the worst I ever was, was actually as a teenager, I was homeless as a teenager, but I was in a band that was okay. popular locally. The, the band Voodoo in San yeah, yeah. Diego. And um, so we had a warehouse 
that the band rehearsed in in San Marcos and this warehouse, we, we tried to like soundproof it. So we had all these like mattresses we got from the alley that had piss stains and blood stains and shit. And, um, I slept on that shit. You know, I, I mean, we, all the money that the band would make, they go, Oh, this is going into investing in the band. And I, I'm like, if you're not going to pay me for these shows, I'm going to fucking live at that. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So I was close. It was pretty much, kind of like being homeless but not really but that's dude my my friend pat he had a band again you band guys you find it you find your way but my my friend pat he worked at this one company and it was like a it was like a transportation company but they had severely downsized like at, at one point they had like two or three big warehouses and now they had downsized to one but they still owned all three so there there was two abandoned warehouses and my friend Pat ended up talking the owner into letting him live in one of the warehouses. And I mean, it was, it, he, he started using it only as like for band practice. And then, you know, I mean, he could have gone and got an apartment, but he was like, what the fuck? Why? Because this place was so big right? that he had his band area. He built a kitchen. He built a, um, there was bathrooms already, but he like remodeled them a, re- a little bit. And he, um, he built some walls and built himself some bedrooms and stuff in this place. And he ended up living in it. He lived in it for shit, like six years. And the only, wow. only, only reason he, he moved out of it was because he moved out of state. He moved to your neck of the woods. He lives up in Walnut Creek or, or used to. Now he lives in your neighborhood. Now he's an LA guy. 